Hey guys, Tim here from Algonor. Alright, so Melodic Techno is rapidly rising the ranks on Beatport right now and is now about the 4th or 5th most popular genre on the site. Today I'm going to focus specifically on how to make Melodic Techno style drums and cover a few tricks and techniques to make your drums sounding a bit more interesting. The MIDI patterns are largely the same as techno or harder techno, but the big difference is in sample selection where the kick is more muted and a thinner, spacier mix with lots of shakers and short high frequency percussive sounds. As always, as part of these underground masterclass videos, you can download a free pack of all the patches, loops, MIDI and sounds and stuff that have been made from the description or from our site and use them royalty free in your own music. So let's get into it. All right, so. As per the norm, I'm going to be using Atlas for the drums just because it's really easy to find interesting sounds in these maps and you can cycle all the sounds out in the kit with one button using new kit. So let's load a new map though. We're going to go maps, algo drums 5s. So these are some samples that we've made uh, that sound pretty good for melodic techno. And we're going to go new kit. Yeah, try again. Not too bad. Yeah, sweet. All right, so let's start with the kick. And basically what we want is a muted kick. And there's kind of two strategies here. We can either try and find a kick in the map that's already muted and kind of nice and round and good to go. Or we can take potentially a punchier kick and do a bit of tweaking. So what have we got here? That's pretty punchy. We'll try some other ones. Oh, that's actually quite nice and clean. I might just use that. Yeah, it's a bit big. All right, let's go back to this other one. Let's work with that. Okay, so pattern. Uh, first thing we're going to do is also change the tempo to 122. It's about on average the tempo of melodic techno. Um, so C1 for the kick. I'll turn the little headphone icon on so we can hear it. There's your kick. We'll duplicate this over to fill the bar. All right, kick. Let's do a little bit of tweaking. So let's go output channel two, new audio channel. Um, let's get rid of Atlas for a second ins and outs, audio from, it's a bit bigger, audio from Atlas, channel two, monitor in. And there it is. So what I might do is just gain that up a little bit, a little bit of a mixing tip. I tend to mix with my kick at about zero dBs and everything else in the song kind of falls underneath that. All right, cool. So here's our kick drum. Boost that a little bit. That'll do. Let's do a bit of EQing. Um, so we'll check on EQ8. So what I want to do is kind of, I might just mute this a little bit more and just give it a bit more boom. It's also a little bit long, so let's shorten that as well. So I'll go back to Atlas. Um, I'm just going to take this shape knob, which is basically an ADSR on one knob. Uh, if you turn it left, it pulls the release in. If you turn it right, it um, so that's the release getting short. If you turn it right, it increases the attack and you lose your transient. You can get rid of your transient if you want to. I might just make it a little bit shorter. Short and punchy, well, short anyway. And let's get rid of some of that punch that we don't need. So I'm gonna get a new node, turn one and four off, get the new node. So the punch is around 150, 200 Hertz. Let's just try and find it by boosting it. Yeah, it's definitely about there. So to get rid of it, I might just increase the Q a little bit. Pull that down. Sounds a little bit better. Might just boost something around the the boom, the low end as well, around the sort of 50, 60. You can sort of see it there, that peak. All right, what's the difference? Yeah, bit too punchy, bit too sort of boxy, bit more muted and deep. Cool, that's our kick drum, that'll do. All right, so next on the list is a shaker. So basically all melodic techno tracks have like a whole lot of shakers going on. Um, 16th shakers, so let's find one of those. Might go and try and find one manually actually. We'll zoom in here, try and find a good one. That's quite good. Not too bad. That's might quite good as well. It's a bit crunchy, but I kind of like it. So let's pull this in. We'll give it, give it its own channel. We'll go to channel three. Uh, let's make a new audio channel because we're doing, we'll do some processing. So channel three in. All right. So we want a 16th shaker. So let's punch that in. So we'll start with just a straight 16th. There it is. One, two, three, four. Okay, there's your 16th shaker. Probably a bit loud. Let's give it a listen. Pull that down. So that's just a straight velocity 16th shaker, but we might want to add a bit of movement to this as well. Some tracks do seem to have very straight 16th um, shakers as well with basically no velocity. So it's kind of a up to you. 
But if you want a bit more movement, what we could do is we could take um, one of these notes, the first one saying, just pull the velocity down a little bit, just a little bit, and then take those two and copy that across. So basically the velocity is going down, up, down, up, down, up. And that should give it a bit of movement. So it'll sound a little bit more natural. Next thing we can kind of do now as well is we can kind of side chain this a little bit so it pumps to the kick. Now again, if you're gonna put a bunch of compression on your drums as a whole, that compressor is gonna push the volume of everything down when the kick hits. So you'll kind of get that side chaining effect anyway. But if you wanna kind of control it in isolation, you can just do a bit of a side chain on the channel. So we'll go side chain to audio two, which is the kick. Um, keep that at ratio of two. And then tack down a little bit. And just pull that down. Don't do too much. Just a little bit. So now it's gonna kind of pump to the kick. That's not too bad. Um, and the last thing we should probably do as well if we're working with um, trying to make a cool groovy pattern is add on a bit of groove. So I've got my groove here, swing, we'll chuck this on the pattern. And I've got it set up so it's I'm using the 99% swing and then with a the timing at 100%. And I now use the global amount to dial in how much swing I want. Um, so we kind of want about 20%. 30% uh, will be too much. Let's give that a listen. That's just too much. Zero is too little, it's just too straight and robotic. Yeah, about 20 will do the job. That'll do, okay. So let's do a bit of EQing as well. This shaker is a bit crunchy and I kind of want it a bit brighter. So we'll load on an EQ. We're gonna try and pull away some of the high mids. So what we got? Let's do it. About 1.5K I reckon is where those high mids are at. Where that crunch is at. Yeah, pull that down. I might even shove up the, the air as well. What does that sound like? Yeah, that sounds a bit better. All right, we need to give this some stereo width as well. So you might know in the plugin, um, the Synth Native Instruments Massive, there's an there's an, there's an effect called Dimension Expander. We can make that ourselves just using a delay. So if we go to delay, simple delay, chuck this on. So what we essentially want to do is offset the left and right channel. So if we turn this to time and time and dial the left channel to one millisecond and the right channel to about quite low, but like 20 milliseconds, we'll go full wet. What this is gonna do is it's gonna offset the right channel so it's basically 20 milliseconds later than the left channel, which is gonna give you a sort of automatic stereo spread. Um, let's give that a listen. So with it off, mono, turn it on, yeah. And then we can just tweak the timing if you go too high, it starts to sound like a delay. Well, you can't really hear it because it's the 16th, but it does. That should do the job as well. And we'll chuck on a bit of reverb just to wash out just a little bit as well. Might chuck the side chain at the very end of the channel. So it's gonna side chain the reverb. So I like to use uh, Valhalla Room. I might put this after that, that as well. Too much. Quite a low amount, but a little bit long. Maybe I'll pull back on, um, I'll raise the high cut a bit so it captures some of the highs and reverbs in as well. Yeah, that's adding some subtle depth. Not too dry. Okay, cool. Next step, uh, we want something on the offbeat to kind of carry that rhythm. So let's go, uh, I reckon we want like a closed hat, possibly even, possibly even another shaker or at, le or at least a closed hat that kind of sounds like a shaker. So what have we got? This is like a classic 909. It's too bright. Yeah, maybe if we pull back the uh, transient, raise the attack. Could work, could work. All right, let's give this a go. Um, oh, we'll put, give it a, give it some channel. We'll say channel four. All right. That was channel four in. Okay, close that. There it is. Duplicate that over. Okay. Nah, I think that's just too metallic. Let's go try and find another one. What about this one? Yeah, that sounds quite cool. Just get rid of that transient. All right. Yep, we can work with that. All right, 
So let's wash that out a little bit again with reverb. In this case, I kind of want quite a bit of reverb, but I need it to be a bit shorter so it's not too long. It doesn't wash the whole mix out. Yeah, too dry. Pull it back in the mix a little bit. All right, that should do the trick. All right, now what we want is a clap. Uh, so we want a, quite a short, resonant clap. What have we got? It's quite classic. Oh, that's a good one. I'm a fan of that. All right, channel five. Um, at well, at this channel five in. Okay, let's put the rhythm down. That's the snare drum. That's your clap. Punch that in. Now what I'm going to do here is it's going to be right on the kick. But what I might pull, do is pull this back just a little bit using command and the arrow keys just to put it before the kick. Just to kind of accentuate the uh, transient of that clap. And it also gives the whole groove a bit more of a uh, sloppy but uh, fast and interesting groove. It's also way too loud. Alright, sounding good. Okay. So we're not going to put reverb on this clap as well because we've already got reverb on the shaker and the close air and we'll do some more sounds with reverb too. We need something to kind of ground that uh, depth of the space. But what I will do is EQ it a bit. I want to make it sound a little bit more resonant and a little bit more um, uh, crunchy. So I'm going to pull the highs down a little bit. I might boost, uh, boost some mids. Yes, about there. You can see it. Yeah, kind of brings that out a bit more. I might also try and shorten it again with that shape knob. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So now what we want to do is, now that it sounds a bit barren still, we want to add some lushness to the highs. And to do that, we're going to do a sidechain ride, pretty classic techno trick. Um, so let's get a ride. It's a classic 808, it's like 909 ride. That's an interesting one. Metallic. That sounds pretty good. Again, classic. So we'll go output channel six. Uh, yep. All right, audio channel. So we can do some processing. Uh, what am I doing? Atlas, channel six, monitor in, turn it down. All right, eighth sidechain ride. Ooh, it's quite quiet. Um, all right, so you want one on the beat and on the off beat. Okay, it's gonna sound kind of weird. It's too loud and also needs a bit more sidechain, well, a lot of sidechain. So we'll sidechain that to the kick and we'll pull that down, pull that to lower. We'll push it in the back of the mix. To the point where you can barely hear it, but it's still there. It's going to kind of glue everything together. And what I might do now as well is do a bit of effects. So let's check on a, um, we could do a chorus. So I'm going to use just to kind of give it some width. So let's go Native Instruments Coral. It's quite a good one. With the full. Universal sounds quite clean. Actually, you know, Sumble sounds better. With it off. Losing some highs there. I might dial some of the mix back in. It is making it sound a bit less clean, which in a good way. So that's good. Maybe I'll check it before the side chain. Um, all right. So without it, everything sounds kind of uh, a little bit robotic and a little bit static. And that ride just helps glue things together. And depending on your song on your mix, you can really push that in the mix as well. 
we can have it come in as added energy in terms of like structure. All right, so that's basically your sort of fundamental drums. So now what we want to do is um, some more character sounds. Um, so before we do that, let's process this. So we're going to group all those together. Good group. Um, now I love to use the Universal Audio plugins. They sound great. I'm using them more and more in my music. Highly recommend. So let's, for this one, let's use the, um, we're going to use Fatso. Fatso Junior. It's nice and warm. So we're going to set this to, because it's a, group of sounds we'll go bus uh, I'm going to push that warmth right up to four and now what you want to do is just have a few dBs of reduction so what have we got oh, it's pretty much on the money and make sure that the output volume is about the same when you turn it off a bit louder yeah that's really gluing things together quite nicely just immediately makes it sound out of the box. Um, all right, cool, character sounds. All right, first little attempt, we're gonna use an open hi-hat, a rhythmic, muted, uh, filtered, washed out, delayed, open hi-hat. So what have we got? Mm, bit too classic for me. Pro tip, if you're trying to design interesting sounding drums, choose interesting sounding samples. That was pretty good. That sounds cool. Let's use that. Okay. Go to its own channel. It goes to channel seven. Uh, new audio channel. Probably should chuck some effects on this first. Um, have I got my keyboard working? Yeah. Where's my open hat? There it is. That's a cool hat. All right, let's go filter, audio effects, auto filter, boom. We're gonna filter this down and let's check, make it 12 so it's a bit brighter. I even change it to a better quality filter, OSR. And let's give it a bit of stereo width. So we're gonna dial this LFO amount up just so the filter's moving a little bit and then we'll increase the phase. Um, so it's doing a slightly different filtering on the left and right channel. Basically, it's rotating around. That's all good. Now let's check a decay, a delay on that. We'll go echo, ping pong. That'll do the job. Pull that back a bit. Might just offset one of these just a tiny amount, so it's a bit imperfect. Bit of feedback, a bit more feedback. Sweet. It's also quite warm, so we'll just use an EQ to get rid of some of that warmth. doing quite a cool thing all right all right that's gonna play along to the beat and come up with something interesting I think that kind of works actually as it is so I'm just doing the offbeat One more, just in front of that with a lower velocity. You can basically just get creative here and do random stuff. That's what I'm basically trying to do here with these, these drums is just do a few random layers of interesting character. Might filter down a bit more. That's just gonna sit in the background now and give it sort of texture. So it's not too boring. All right, let's try another one. So to get some more speed, we'll get some more sixteenths going on. I'm gonna use a clave or a rim. It's a rim and do a pattern with this. So let's give a look. That might do the job. 
it's a bit too basic. That's quite interesting. Let's go with that. All right. Phone channel, definitely, because we need a fix. All right. Audio channel. That was channel eight. Atlas and channel eight. Great. Um, so once again, we want to filter. But we're going to do a similar thing, but we're going to do a bit more extreme. So we'll dial that down. We need a pattern. Ah, where's our rim? There. Um, whoops. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's going to sound kind of weird to start with. Is that the right sound? No, I didn't think so. That was the bongo. Whoops. There it is. Okay, again with the phase. Might do a bit of auto panning on this as well. Um, let's wash that out with some reverb. room might try and shorten up a little bit nah it's already pretty short it's all good and we need to get some groove in that as well so we'll side chain that so we'll go compressor I could even just copy from the ride channel. Just tweak it. Just to make it sound a bit more interesting as well. I might bit crush this. Uh, plugins, D16, DC more. It's a really great bit crush. I do it in front of the reverb actually. This side. The yeah, that sounds kind of interesting. Cool. Pull it in the back of the mix. All right, so we've got two character layers here now. We've got this thing. And this hat thing also like doing its business. So let's pan them left and right to give us some stereo spread. So we'll go boom, boom. Solo those, the command. That's giving us some nice texture. Add back in the fundamental drums. Sounding pretty cool. All right, cool. Let's add to this some tr traditional drums as well with some toms or bongos. We'll experiment. Start with the tom. We could get something, something cool. That's quite cool. Bit long. Get a bongo as well. Yeah, it's quite good. Let's try pitching that down an octave. Yeah, that sounds interesting. All right, let's get them their own channel. Go to channel nine. Channel 9, I might lock that and that. Um, so you can't hear it because there's no channel. So we'll pump that in. 9, all right. We need a pattern. Uh, I reckon at this point as well, we've been working on a one bar clip. It's probably a good idea to do four just so you can add variations. So let's do that quickly as well. So duplicate, duplicate. Now I've got four bars. Um, get some extra sounds in. So we're going to kick. I might add in a, another kick at the end. Um, do something with the clap. We'll just get in a second clap. Um, yeah, that should probably be enough just to get something at the end. Yeah, something. You can basically just get creative. Okay, toms and bongos. That's our tom, I believe. Oh, that's our tom. It's our bongo. I'm just gonna put this on the off beats, I reckon. The last off beat. Maybe not every bar.
Yep, add some variation. This can be every bar. So what's, what am I doing there? Try. Let's process that. So I'm going to check on a band pass because I don't really want heaps of lows in these toms because um, they might end up conflicting with the bass line down the track. Um, so we'll just do this and I'll also get rid of some of the highs too since there's a plenty of highs going on in the drum loop. Add some rhythm again to the drum loop so it's not too static and boring. All right, let's do some, let's wash that out a little bit with some reverb. Um, once again, good old Valhalla room. Um, I actually personally like to add reverb per channel, as you're probably seeing, rather than doing sends. I've sort of undecided which one is my favorite method, but this just gives you a bit more control. So. Make it nice and long this time. Try and snap it up a little bit with a compressor. Let's just give that a go. Do it before the reverb. High ratio. You gotta do it before the filter as well. Sounded a bit flabby. This should hopefully give it a bit more snap. Yeah, that should do the job. All right, so there you go. That's one uh, drum loop. Um, so we got, what have we got? To review, we've got a kick, lots of shakers, offbeat sort of shakery closed hat, nice tight clap, a ride to kind of gel everything together, um, and a few character layers. Um, really, those last three character layers, you can just get creative and do whatever. Um, and a bit of processing. So let's record this loop. So let's go new audio channel, boom, uh, group, sweet, in. That's all good to go. I'm going to set the audio to sends only, just so we don't hear a duplicate, because this is already going to the master channel. There we go. You can see it there. Loop's going in. So let's record that. So. There you go, there's one, give it a proof of concept. Let's give it a bit of a listen. Turn that off. Yeah. To the master. That's a nice melodic techno drum loop. All right, so let's go back to Atlas. Turn that off, turn that back on again, and let's do a trick. Let's, let's generate nine more. First of all, I'm going to save this drum kit. So we'll go drum kits, save kit, uh, melodic techno 01. Cool. Um, so that's our drum kit saved now with all the 16 samples. And we've got one recorded loop and obviously our MIDI pattern. Let's make 10 more. Just like that. Just see our nice map, even though we don't really need it. Okay. New kit. Record that, it's a cool loop. Okay. Um, so there's another one recorded. Sweet, big kick. Um, all right, let's try again. I'll save that kit. Melodic Techno O2. Doozy. All right, called that. Or 
awesome. Better save that kit as well. So if you get Melodic Techno 03. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, record seven more. So we have 10 loops, save all the kits, and then we'll give them a listen. So just give me a second. All right, cool, so that's done. So I've made 10 uh, Melodic Techno drum loops here, just like that, um, just by basically cycling out the drum kit. Um, they've all been saved, so we've got 10 kits here. Um, each kit has 16 samples, and 10 audio loops, and the one pattern. So let's give those audio loops a listen. So from the top, the first one we are making, Cool, 10 melodic techno drum loops, just like that. And it was really easy to make more. I could basically just keep making tons more. Um, so yeah, and it was quite interesting as well because the first loop that we made was in some ways kind of safe. The samples were sort of, um, yeah, safe is the word. But obviously by doing new kit, Atlas was picking some strange sounds I never would have chosen myself, but they do really work. So there you go, uh, that's 10 melodic techno drum loops. So once again, I'm gonna save all these loops, um, all those 16 kits that are in Atlas, the MIDI clip, as well into a pack that you can download from the description or from our website um, and they're free to use however, however you want. Yeah, so that's the tutorial on Melodic Techno drums. I hope you picked up a few tricks or techniques across that. More or less, Melodic Techno is about muted, nice deep kicks, heaps of shakers, lots of reverb, and that should help give you a really good groove. And then of course from there you just add your sub bass and your washed out leads and top lines and you should have a hit right there. So make sure you check out some of the other tutorials on the channel as well. Uh, we do have other tutorials covering bass lines um, for techno and also uh, leads and chord progressions and that kind of stuff. And there's some good stuff there. But otherwise, thanks for watching and catch you next time.